This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Time once again to check Port 110. This week's question, the first one comes from Beardy Jesse. Uh, he says, I noticed when Darren was installing stuff like Python USB and RF Cat a couple of episodes ago that when the are you sure yes or no option appeared, he typed Y to continue. Uh, that makes sense to me. When this is sensible, the capitalized item in the brackets is the one that Linux assumes you want and will be performed simply by pressing enter. So instead of wasting a good half second reaching for the shift and another half second pressing Y, you can plow through that option just by hitting enter. Yeah, I no, no. totally didn't know that. This is and like this has just been the paradigm in all kind of like text based, you know, like DOS. Bash, TCL, like yeah. any of those, um, and the idea being, yeah, sure. There's a default. Sometimes it's like in brackets or something like that. You know, abort, retry, fail, ignore. Uh, That's crazy. I, I didn't know you could just press enter, but well, it makes sense. The reason that I don't is the same reason that when I wake a computer up that's got a screensaver going, is I wake it up by pressing the control key or the shift key. It's just natural. A modifier key. Because oh. I don't know what's going on on the screen, and I don't want to accidentally say yes to something. And so it's so yes, you're right. You could save a half second, but after having been a sysadmin for a long enough and knowing that oh yeah, just keep hitting enter, you'll be fine. You didn't need that <laughs> database, did you? That's great. That's good feedback. So thank you very much, Beardy Jesse. Our next question comes from Chris R. He writes, have you ever considered using aliasing pseudo to please? I love that idea. Because then you're <laughs> like, so funny. you know, please RM tech RF slash. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, please make me a sandwich. <laughs> that's, see, that's see, it a makes great sense. use of the alias. I like yes. it. Yeah. I love all this sensible feedback. It's well, because pseudo awesome. is just saying super user do. Yes. Do. Which, if you watch Hack Tip, you'll find out very soon. Oh, yeah, you've been killing it with the Hack Tip lately. Thank you. Yeah, I've been having a ton of fun. I've been getting a lot of really good feedback about that, too. So it's been quite enjoyable. And we have another one. I know it's a crazy week for feedback. So John says, Black Buntu is somewhat alive on SourceForge. I, um, a couple weeks ago, I discussed a bunch of different alternatives. Like Backbox? Yes, like Backbox. And he says its last update was 8.4.2. 2011, but the page is still there. Thanks for your awesome podcast. Love it. You and Darren get along so well, though I bet you get along with everyone anyway. Aw. Are you kidding? She I know. I hate this we guy. get along? What the heck? Seriously, you yeah. should see us off camera. It's you insane. should. We like punch each other in the face. Yeah. It's uh, true. No. Um, <laughs> what, what Not in the it? face. I was going to say, we actually got, a, it was either an email or a tweet. Somebody had mentioned that they were finding like conflicting versions of uh, Black, Ubuntu? Black Ubuntu, really, with different file sizes, oh. obviously different MD5 hashes. Yeah. Um, At cool that, that point, I wouldn't Forge. trust to download it. Well, I mean, I trust is a conversation where I don't want to have to go down that road because I mean, here you are using Ubuntu, That's and true. do you trust Canonical to not be like sending <laughs> your keystrokes to the mothership now? That's anyway. true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that if a project's dead, it might just be dead, or, or maybe some people will pick it up. Maybe some people will like hop on SourceForge and bring it, it back. It would be nice because we'll I would really, really like to check it out and I find would. a good just alternative. Don't have the time. <laughs> I know, right? Gosh, been crazy busy. All right, so our Technolist photo of the week. This photo is from Tigger. She uh -huh. says that she is a 17-year-old female hacker. She Aww. has an adorable kitty, and she watches Hack Five all the time. Oh, I read it as it was a 17-year-old female kitty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, okay. it's a hacker. Okay, because I was about to say, that cat doesn't look a day <laughs> over eight. Oh, yeah. hatch your mouth. I know. <laughs> if you guys have feedback, uh, pictures, or just information, you can send it over to feedback at hack5.org with the subject line Technolest for the photo so we That's can find right. them. That's right. Pics or GTFO at feedback at hack5.org. Uh, so with all of that, let's, let's take a quick break. And when we get back, it's time for trivia. If you're setting up a website to start your new business, showcase your portfolio, publish your blog, Domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. If you need to get a domain name, consider getting yourself a .com. See, a .com domain is the original. We all know it's globally understood and immediately lends credibility no matter what you choose. Plus, if you're into investing and buying and selling domains, .coms have the highest aftermarket value. And you can find yourself a .com over at Domain.com. Shannon and I are huge fans of them because they're affordable, reliable, easy to use, and plus, Domain.com's active social media presence on Twitter, at Domain.com. You know, they have great customer service. They're really just a fun place to do business. So the guys over at Domain.com, they're huge fans of you guys in Hack 5, and they want to hook us all up 
to get 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 at domain.com checkout. That's 15% off and big savings. Don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Time once again for trivia. This week's trivia question is, what type of memory was used in the Nintendo 64? That was last week's trivia, actually. And it was called RD-RAM. I totally didn't know that. I need to Google that now. Interesting, isn't it? Google it now. Now, this week's question is, what best describes the Windows project codename Quebec? You can answer that over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some swag. And it's always about, like... Places, you know, <laughs> Chicago, Longhorn. Yeah, that's true. It is. Yeah. He has a very good point. Are you finding it? I, no. no. I static my thing, oh. and now it's connecting Oops. to my socks. That's okay. Um, Somebody can look it up and tell us if we're wrong. Oh. But I'm pretty sure RD RAM. Yes, it is. It is a type of synchronous dynamic RAM. Ah. I don't think it's very popular anymore. Mm, is this the stuff not. that uh, DDR, not DDR. See, um, this is like old school. Yeah. Well, old school RAM. I don't know. I love like the RAM bus versus DDR back in the day thing. Oh, yeah. You know, there's always. Um... Oh, hey, hey! It is RAM bus. RD RAM was developed by RAM bus. I knew I'd heard about this <laughs> stuff before. Cool. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder what RAM bus is doing these days. Oh, that RAM they... bus. Oh gosh. Yeah. They... What is RAM bus doing? Didn't I'm gonna name out. my first kid RAM bus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, looks like they're having patent fun. Oh. So oh. we'll just yeah, that's no leave fun. it per to them. Rambus. Maybe I shouldn't name my first kid after 12.9 billion in damages a for a secret and unlawful cons conspiracy to kill the revolutionary technology, which makes Yikes. billions of dollars hanging to power. All uh, right. Well, whoa. this isn't the patent show. So remember, it, dude, what was that? It's just... Yeah, I know. This is, well, this is like techie. Uh, this sounds like um, <laughs> your, your average day tech article. scandal. I love some of that. Oh, juicy. my God. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, if you guys have feedback about the show, you can email us, feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you think about the show and what you would like to see us cover and any information that you enjoyed on our past segments. And don't forget, you can always go over to hack5.org slash follow to find all links to social networks and whatnot, everything that we are doing. And over there, you'll find links to threatwire.org, which is the uh, the new show that we're covering on uh, the Tech Feed channel on YouTube, which is all about basically your privacy, security, and internet freedom. Yes. It's we should stuff. probably also mention that we are going to CES in about two weeks from now. So uh, we will be there. Make sure to, you know, check it out if you are, you guys are there. Us. Let us. us know if there's anything there that you want to see. We always get there and it's just like so Yay. much <laughs> and trying to find something so that isn't the next big TV the from Panasonic. Big. Woo! TV! Wow, More our TV. TV got bigger. <laughs> and you can always go over to hackshop.com. I did remember that uh, address this week. And <laughs> that's where we keep all of our cool gadgets that you can purchase to help support us directly. The USB rubber ducky. Uh, what's that thing? What's that do? Oh, Aaron? that's a camera what? connector kit so you can use the USB rubber ducky on an iPad. We'll get into that later. But the USB rubber ducky, man, it's like Android, <laughs> iPhone. Hide your children, hide your wife. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Trust your techno lust. Bye. <laughs>